Usually just a sheath like that costs you $25. Yeah, that's a, no, that's a solid sheath. I, yeah. There's no such thing as a sub $25 big boy knife. This one's probably my favorite one on the table right now. It's just so <laughs> funny. Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. I'm George, and today we're talking about knives under $25. But you may have noticed Theo. Hello. Theo, where are you from? I'm from New Hampshire. I just moved here a couple weeks ago. It's a long drive, man. It is indeed. It's about 2,000 miles. So Theo's a dyed-in-the-wool knife nut, and he moved all the way from New Hampshire alone the week <laughs> of Thanksgiving to be here with us. And that's the kind of man we want to talk knives with. <laughs> what do you do here, Theo? Uh, I do graphic design, so stuff like e uh, emails, and I'm going to be doing shirts soon. Stickers, I'm going to be trying to do that as well. So Blade HQ swag has never looked as good as it's going to look under this guy. <laughs> I'm so excited. Anyway, why don't you start us off with the first knife on the table? All right. Uh, today we've got the uh, CRKT uh, Pilot, and this is a Vox Knives design uh, out of Denmark. This is kind of like a bigger version of the Pilar that they've got already. This one, just instead of being the stainless steel that it usually has and the weight that it carries, um, this one is kind of like a FRN plasticky kind of handle. A fancy plastic. You hear yeah. plastic and you think milk jug. No, <laughs> this is like plastic as in handgun frame. Yeah, like fiberglass reinforced. We got a liner lock on this one, and we were looking at this beforehand before we started shooting. The blue pop on the back, we're both a fan of. We like that it's something different instead of it just being a black handle silver blade like we see a lot of different knives have. This one's got that nice blue pop to it as well as a deep carry pocket clip so that's something you can definitely tuck away nicely but when you pull it out you've got some some good to look at yeah so you mentioned the pilar the pilar is named after ernest hemingway's boat but i'm interested what piet means if you know let us know in the comments what piet is maybe it's some other famous person's boat that'd be <laughs> very cool. well could be that'd be fun to name him after that <laughs> this is it danish right yeah it was keeping it danish you want to go over this one yeah sure so this is the kershaw fraction this is one of my first Big boy knives. Do you think I can hear y'all saying right now? There's no such thing as a sub $25 big boy knife. You have not held the fraction if you think that. This knife is a Yenz Anso design with a real carbon fiber inlay. And look at this action. So I'm just going to depress the liner lock here and watch it drop and wiggle. That's the kind of action you get on hundreds of dollars knives. For under $25 right now at bladehq.com, you can get this thing. And this is a knife. It's a really good one, a nice slicey hollow grind, and it's a Yen's Anso design. And if I may say so myself, looking good. It does look good. I, th I think it looks great, especially if it's like under 25 bucks and it has uh, the carbon fiber on the handles. I think this is real carbon fiber because the way it's kind of like uh, glinting in the, in the light, it definitely looks more like it's not the kind of overlay situation that you get on, on some knives. This is like a real overlay and it looks great, especially on like both sides, the show side looks great. Feels a lot of light. attention to detail. Yeah. Next up, why don't you talk about this one? Nice bright red handle on this one. This K-Bar Dozier, it's been out for a while. Uh, it's just a solid pocket, like a in the pocket beater that you can have. I've known a lot of people that have had these and like really love them as something that's fairly cheap, but it works really well. I've seen ones with like the tip snapped off because people love them so hard that they- <laughs> <laughs> Loved them they so loved, hard. Loved them too hard, maybe. The thing is, is, for this price, I don't feel bad about loving my knife that hard. Yeah, for sure. Like it's definitely one that you would, anywhere you need it, you just toss it. Don't have to worry about losing it. They work really well. Um, the thumb stud is only on one side, but you can reverse them. It's just a screw on the back. Amy you can screw that. Is yeah. the pocket clip reversible too? Um, to the best of my knowledge, it is. Oh, so look at that. It totally is. Side too. So we had somebody in the comments say that he's on a very tight budget, but his dream knife is a Benchmade bug out. And oh, the Benchmade bug out. Oh, look at that. You totally got one. <laughs> so the Benchmade bug out is an awesome knife. I have three of them. They're so good, but they are a little bit up there. They're like 135, 140 right now. Found about that, yeah. But to that person, I would say if you need a Benchmade bug out, but you're on a super tight budget, Look at the K-Bar Dozier because it has a very similar FRN handle, a nice grippy texture. Yeah, I think that they're like super comparable. I think that obviously the lock is different and the, the material is different, mm -hmm. but the size is really roughly the same. The look is really similar. Um, also both really reliable. I, I've had my bug out for a long time and really enjoyed it. Yeah, look at um, all the scratches on that thing. <laughs> I, I used to work for a much different retailer before and we sold Dozier's. And people really love these things. They beat them up all the time. Sometimes they'd scratch them up and maybe break a tip off, but they always came back and be like, oh, I want a new one. This one's, I've I've taken it through the paces. I've had it for years. Um, people love these things. It's reversible pocket clip, reversible uh, thumb stud. There's only one of each, but the thumb stud you can reverse, pocket clip you can reverse. So it is a little bit customizable. So if you're left-handed, a perfect knife for you. Yeah, and the lockback is ambidextrous by nature, so it's great. Well, that's super awesome. Gotta love the K-Bar Dozier. One of my favorite knives on the table. Awesome. So the next one is kind of a fun brand. 
This is Brighton Blades. <laughs> I like this one a lot. We were looking over these beforehand. This one's probably my favorite one on the table right now. It's just so funny. <laughs> so fun story. I learned about Brighton Blades on the news. I was reading an article in the Salt Lake Tribune. I'm like, hey, look, that's a knife company in the news. So I messaged my friend Caitlin, who works there. She's like, oh, yeah, they're super cool. The nicest people. And I went I'm like, hey, you heard about these people I'm at Blade HQ? And they're like, oh, yeah, the, the girls from Fox. So two women from the Fox team who are always working booths when you go to like Blade Show or something, they and one of their sisters got together and started Brighton Blades and it's sort of for women. And they have all these lovely designs and this one's the resilient and it has the cacti, cactuses. Mm -hmm. Cacti. Cacti. <laughs> anyway, it's just, it just makes me smile so much. Now this one's actually the larger version. We only have this one on hand, but there's a smaller version that is under 25, but this one will run you about 30, but it's bejeweled. It's got a nice satin finish. It has no blade play up or down against the lock, a nice easy to actuate liner lock. It fits in a purse, fits in a pocket. I mean, I'd carry that. <laughs> I think I would too, honestly. I'm not a huge fan of the orange uh, little gems on there, but I think that Dude, I even it. without them, this, like, it, it's cool. Like it's very specific for a market, but I think that the market that they're sending it to, it, they definitely nail it. Like I, I want one and it's not, I'm not even the demographic that it's for. Like it, <laughs> it looks a lot nuts. like a Kershaw, uh, sorry, a CRKT Persian, like that really, like, not mm -hmm. old one, but like. So check out Brighton Blades. They have the resilient, but they have a ton of other cool designs too. Check them out. There's a million of them. Next up, we're gonna take it to the woods. Obviously, uh, yes, we'll start off with some more EDC in the woods, but uh, this is a SE Chirp. C-H-U-R-P. Uh, so this is a folder. It's also, it's a locking folder. So this is another one of their folders. This one's got some green micarta on it. It feels great. I like how it gets a little bit tacky when you, like tacky isn't like sticky, when your hands are a little bit sweaty. So if you're out in the woods and doing whatever, it stays true in your hands instead the of- The more you around. use it, the grippier it gets. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's a great way, for, like a great material to use, especially for the environment they're wanting to put them in. Um, it's a good size, I think. It's got D2 blade. Okay, so let me have this straight. You got, you got micarta yeah. and D2 mm -hmm. and a name like Essie with a design that comes with it. I, but I, I, still, you're getting an SE design, a D2 blade, a micarta handle, and it's all under $25. Yeah, that's a great steal. That's that's a deal right there. It's also a money clip. That's a huge clip right there. You could use that as a money clip, no problem. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'd do with it, man. Because you got those great materials. I would immediately take this pocket clip and reverse it to this side. And I know you just said, tip down, you need help. Yeah, I do. This is the help I need. I need a way to carry my keys that's easy to get. That's a fair way to do it. So I'm going to put this here, going to loop my keys through this, and then I'm going to hang it in my pocket like that. And then it's on my left side. I pull it out. Now I have another knife and an easy way to get to my keys. Taylor Martin from Best Damn ADC is always like, I hate keys. There's no easy way to carry it. Essie chirp, Taylor. Look at it. <laughs> anyway, uh, more next into up, the woods. Mora. Still into the woods. Deeper into the woods. Deeper into the woods with the Mora. Yeah, so. Companion? Yeah, I, when we were looking at knives for this list, I could, I could hear the comments already. You're making a video about sub $25 knives and you didn't bring a Mora, so I brought a Mora. <laughs> Yeah, you got any yeah, you any fun with Amora? Uh, I have never used Amora, but I know plenty of people who have and really love them. Um, they're one of those, again, kind of like the uh, the dojos that we were talking about earlier. It's cheap enough that you can beat on it and not feel bad about it, but it's definitely a dependable definitely a dependable piece. Uh, the blade thickness, is, as you can see, is pretty thick, so you could definitely baton with it if you really wanted to and not really worry about destroying it. Yeah, my favorite thing about Amora's is these, they do a true Scandi grind. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh yeah, I just spent 20 bucks on this Mora. But it is so dangerously sharp. You could shave with that, yeah. If you ever watch Histories Alone, I watch that sometimes just to see what survival people can come up with while they're out in the woods. I, I'm amazed at how many people bring a Mora as their knife. You were allowed amazed. 10 items and you picked a Mora? That's a solid one to go, like <laughs> it really a super is. solid way to go with. People say Moras are too cheap to be good. No, 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 no. Moras are too good to be cheap. That's. I think that is a very apt way to put it, yeah. There's, I don't think there's anything you could complain about. I think that there's different steel versions too, correct? There's a the stainless one and a, and a carbon. carbon. So if you wanted to choose between the two, whichever environment you're in. If you're in southern U.S. and you got more uh, humidity and stuff like that, just go with the stainless one. If you're not really too worried about it, go with the, the carbon. That was a great one as well. Also, if 20 bucks is too steep for you, check out the basic 511. That one goes for under $10 and it's still a Mora. It's just a little bit smaller. Next up, I'm going to talk about the folding Mora that no one talks about. <laughs> Ever since I started at Blade HQ, I've wanted to talk about this knife and today is the day. And that is the Sford Peasant. So first of all, guess what country this is made in? Uh, I already saw it, so... Uh, oh. It's made in New it. Zealand. <laughs> and when I think Land knives, I think maybe like Germany, Italy, 
maybe some China, United States, but New Zealand is not a country that was in the not, top I, 50. I found that out just a couple minutes ago and I did not realize that that was the case at all. I thought it was gonna be like Finland or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, so this one's a friction folder. So that means to keep it open, you have to hold it here and that way this tang right here kind of presses up against your hand. So it's not going anywhere when, you, when it's in your hand, but it doesn't technically lock. But that means, say you like break your handle scale or whatever, you can just make a new one out of wood. It's not hard, <laughs> but it has a convex grind. Mm. And all the bushcrafters out there, every time we make a video about outdoor knives, they say either Scandi or convex or it's not a bushcraft knife. Well, on this list, we got a Scandi and we got a convex. And who knew that you can go bushcrafting for under $25? <laughs> yeah. That, that... For sure, I, I really like the idea that you can make your own handles with these too. Like, I think that the majority of it, you're definitely paying for the blade, which I, I think is cool because they age a little bit and the, you don't. It's not rust. It's like just the patina of the blade. You just get it as you use it. Um, so throwing on some like wooden handles that you made yourself when you're out bushcrafting would be a really cool way to, to add some personal flair to it. It's kind of like a modding platform. Almost. Yeah, it's really similar to like how um, uh, OpenL does that, where you've got like those those basic wooden handles, but you could replace it with something else if you wanted to. Uh, and it's, again, it's just the two screws, so it's really easy to replace those pieces and make it your own if you want to. Next up, we're taking it tactical. <laughs> So this one's the Schrade SCHF31. Got to remember your numbers around here. It's got a very solid, oh, it's solid in there. Yeah. Yeah, kind of a nice snap fit sheath. With once again, usually just a sheath like that costs you twenty five. Yeah, that's a no, that's a solid sheath. I, <laughs> yeah, you've got the uh, uh, loop through on that one, so it's pretty easy to just right, go right through your belt, and it's not going to wiggle anywhere. It's not you don't have to worry about it like clipping out. You also have some some holes in the side to be able to strap through whatever way you want to strap through. Like a scout carry. On yeah, that. scout carry. It's a full tang all the way through. Nice jimping everywhere. Yeah, this is solid jim. Like this is like not sharp, but like that kind of really grippy kind that like almost is sharp, but isn't uncomfortable. So the handle has this like rubberized feel. So micarta kind of gets grippier the more moist it gets, but this right out, it is super grippy. And with mm. this finger groove choil, I yeah. don't know. I don't know what, if you know <laughs> what this part there. of a knife is called, we we have hard, a hard time coming up with a name for it. Well, we'll figure something out. I'm gonna call it a groove for now. Tell me if I'm wrong. Anyway, with that, I, like even if I'm wearing gloves, that knife is not going anywhere. Oh no. Mm -mm. And then it's got a nice stout blade, but it's not so thick that you're not gonna be able to slice with it. And a hollow grind. Like it's it's a tactical knife, but also be a camp knife. I think it's like a like more tactical alternative to Mora Mora that we've got. If you like that kind of aesthetic of things, about rather than like the straight bushcraft, you want something that's a little bit more edgy in all ways. In all ways. <laughs> <laughs> Schrade makes a lot of great stuff. I actually have a Schrade, the SCHF9, and I beat the tar out of it the way only a 17-year-old could, and it's still ticking. It did not need replacement, but I've added a lot of knives to the list. Schrades, you can bet your life on for a long time, and they're just not expensive. Anyway, so this one's been mocking me the whole time, and I just, this is a machete. <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna do? They, you cannot hold this in a way that doesn't make you feel like, like Next Clayton door. from Tar Tarzan. Gorillas! Yeah. Every time I pick it up, I'm like, I must speak like a total jerk and carry a shotgun <laughs> around. But nah, this is a 12.5 inch Ontario Spec Plus, USA made with a nice stout blade, but it still has some flex to it like a machete should. And it's got a full guard here. So that way, when you're you know, like trying to clear out a rose bush and you accidentally punch us, punch a trunk of it and you get a thorn in your knuckle because that never happened. Uh, you don't have that happen. That's a good way to go. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've, I've uh, never hacked at any rose bushes myself, but I've definitely had to like clear some uh... Some backwoods of, and uh, back in New Hampshire, we've got woods there, and sometimes it's nice you to clear some things. Got nothing but woods there. Yeah, so sometimes you gotta clear some stuff up. Uh, this would have been nice to have, especially with the the hand guard, because you do get some pine trees out there that'll will nick you in the knuckles. There we go. Plenty of bevel left that you could sharpen it down if you really wanted to. The uh, the bevel comes all the way up to here, around here. So even though the edge is at the very end there, if you wanted to round that out to get a little a finer edge on this thing, uh, you definitely could. Yeah. Is it 10.95 or 10.75? Do you know? Or is it neither of those? I don't know. I know it's a carbon steel, so it can definitely take the toughness. So I, I really appreciate that they left the edge a bit thicker on this. Mm. It's still plenty sharp, but a machete wants to chop. So they kind of left an axe-like edge on it. So if you're going to town on a hickory or something, you're fine. <laughs> but if you really want, you can bring that edge back and yep. make it a bit more razor sharp. But 
it's up to you. It's a choose your own adventure night. <laughs> we, we were kind of on this progression from small to big and then we broke it. Now we're at the tiny. Steel Urban Edge. Yeah, we're, we're even smaller than we were before. I think it was the smallest thing we got on the table. Uh, mm -hmm. Urban Edge here, this is one, like a push knife. Um, it's got the grind on one side, so the other side's flat. George was saying earlier that it'd be something you could easily hold in one hand and be able to like type or, and uh, yeah, do I, other things I with your hands. I straight typed a sentence with that knife in he my He did hand. indeed. <laughs> um, you could definitely do that. It's also like if it was a last ditch kind of situation, if you were if you needed to protect yourself from anything, it's definitely something you can secure in your hand because it's in your knuckles, it's not gonna go anywhere, but it's also not near any part of yourself that you could hurt yourself with. I'm thinking boot knife here. Yeah, you could definitely use that in your boot. I think that'd be a solid way to put it. Yeah, um, you put a clip on this side, and that way the grind isn't gonna be bothering you. You have a nice flat surface against your leg. And you tip, put that right in your boot, and then you reach down and grab, and now you have a knife. And yeah. everything's better when you have a knife. Yeah, I'm, I'm, so. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of how you'd be wrong, and I can't think of it. All right. <laughs> on the other end of things, the back other on Cold Steel, but back. a lot bigger. Yeah, this is the Cold Steel 8 inch chef's knife. So a lot of people are like, if you want a chef's knife, you gotta go, like, you, you should anticipate spending a lot of money, and you should definitely go to a nameless retailer and get on the wedding registry and get your dream knife. You can do that, rock on. But for well under $25, you can get the Cold Steel 8 inch chef's knife, and it has a nice rubberized handle, and it is so, so sharp. And it uses 4116 steel, which is a proven knife steel that is really tough, really easy to sharpen. You can leave it in the sink and it won't be a pile of rust when you come back. Uh, anyone who knows me knows I am awful at cooking, and uh, I would actually buy this because I, I desperately need a kitchen knife, and I, I used a bug out to make my dinner last night. And that, did you really? Yeah, I did. It's, it's not the way to go. It's not the way to go. I should probably buy one of these. I think it's a full tang too, lot. right? So like the the tang of it, if, I think it ends okay. about here. So if you're one of those people that's like kind of concerned that your knife handle is gonna fall off the end of the blade, uh, this one seems like it's pinned all the way in the back. So you've got nothing really to worry about other than my fingerprints on this thing. All right, well that's all the knives we got on the table. We hope that you enjoyed this and whatever you've seen on the table, we hope that you can see your dream adventure can be done with a knife under $25. So if you're shopping for somebody or you're just on a budget, check out these knives and more at bladehq.com. And we'll see y'all on the next one.